just so you know, if any haters come for her in the comments, <laughs> you're coming for me, and that's going to be a problem. You're not going to edit that out? Come no, on, I'm going to edit it in. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Wine by the Bay TV. I'm your host, George Machara. Today we are here in Napa, California, in Oakville, at the Today Vineyards. We got Kara today with us. We're gonna taste some wine. We're gonna walk the property a little bit. She's gonna take us around, talk about the harvest. So let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wine by the Bay TV. I'm your host, George Machara, sponsored by Goosehead Insurance, the Machara Agency. Kara today has invited me back. I cannot believe it. <laughs> I'm shocked uh, too. Uh, yeah, see, I, she, someone must have drugged her. Um, <laughs> The last time we were here to pretend like you know she likes us or whatever. She probably likes you. Um, <laughs> I do. But she knows me, and that's why she probably can't stand me. But either way, uh, we're here. Um, so thanks, Kara, for coming back. Uh, well, letting me come back, I should say, Absolutely. and sharing the property with us again. Yeah. So today we're gonna do. Uh, a, if we, I might break this into two episodes. Actually, we're gonna taste some wine at this table, and then we're gonna go out in the vineyards. And Kara's gonna tell us a little bit about the farming process and how things go here. Uh, we're just past harvest. Uh, it happened a little early this year, right? It did. It was a whirlwind. Um, un unexpectedly um, picked real quick and and early for us. Uh, we are usually more of an October harvest date, and this year, because of the heat spike in around Labor Day, it was uh, it was almost a month early. So. We're happy, happy to have it though. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, footage of the vines and uh, she gave us some nice information on the growing process and we'll get into that obviously when we're actually in the vineyards. But I did want to taste a little wine because I can't yeah. come empty handed. Like I say, if someone invites me back, I have to bring something. Um, so <laughs> that's maybe why you keep getting invited that's back? That's probably why, yes. Keep it up. And whatever it takes. Yeah. <laughs> so just so you know, this is a real working vineyard. We don't have a professional, well, we do have a professional wine too, but a traditional waiter's wine cork was not used in the opening of this bottle. That's right. Uh, we had to go with the hybrid. We went with the, you know, home corkscrew kind of thing, which I cannot stand. Let me see if you can get a look at that. Classic. And then we did the also, which is kind of my favorite. What, you, what is it called? Also. Oh, I didn't even know it had a name. Yeah, it's called an also. The thing I can't use is... So I have a close-up picture from the house that I'll just cut there in here. Because I feel like you probably can't see this. I love this wine tool. Um, I'll do a whole episode on also at some point. You should. Um, really great for classic bottles that like have a dry cork or like a really possibly compromised cork. Mm. So that you don't penetrate the cork itself, so it makes it a lot easier to open. So um, Fine, that's enough of that. Okay. Uh, but I did bring some Chardonnay, only because I know you like white wine. Yeah, I do. Okay, so I brought this uh, Argentinian El, en El Enemigo Chardonnay uh, 2019 um, from Argentina. I will take a shot of this so you can get a good look at it. Um, it is, let's see, what's the alcohol by volume? 13.5 alcohol by volume. Um, it got a lot of good scores. That's not why I bought it. I actually bought it from a small wine shop in uh, Walnut Creek. Um, and I will cut in uh, a little Chiron of their website. So if you want to go buy the wine, uh, you can absolutely go there and check it out. $24.99 uh, for a 2019 Chardonnay from Argentina. Um, some might say that's expensive. I don't think so. Argentinian wine has gotten more expensive over the years. And uh, this, I'd say the average critic score, I remember seeing this score as high as 96 and as low as 92. So it's probably like a 93, 94 point average score. And again, I'll put that in for you so you get a good look at it. Yeah. Um, well, the only numbers that matter here are yours. So. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, no, really yours. Oh, come on. I mean, I could be bought for a song. Oh, ah, I see. It has to be a good song. Oh, okay. But, you know, like it can't be like some sort of fly by night. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I'm kind of excited to taste this. I bought this a couple of months ago and I meant to do a review for it um, and I never did. So awesome. we're gonna awesome do it right time. now. Yeah. So let's pour some of this. Uh, we chilled this a little bit. It's a, it's not like room temperature. It's probably what, 60 degrees-ish? I would call it pleasant. Pleasant. Mm -hmm. Still cold, like cold enough to be drank as a white wine, but not so cold that you're gonna numb your tongue and not taste all the right. all the great flavors. Right away, I get a classic Chardonnay smell. I was just pouring it. Mm -hmm. The color is classic Chardonnay. It's very gold, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a brown gold, it's like a more mature gold. Right. And of course, I never have a sheet of paper. <laughs> 
here. I'm gonna put the up sun is the just black so shirt. beautiful. Like that might give you a, there you a go. look for it, and then a little bit of a thing there. It's nice. Yeah, it sure is. What do you think? It's not overly tropical. That's no, for sure. It has almost like not. a salty kind of component. Salty. That's yeah. nice. It's not from Mendoza, which is in the mountains, mm. which is kind of surprising because that salty component I would think would be mm. more of a coastal region. Yeah. Although, you know, maybe that is typical of Mendoza. I'll do a little research, and if it is, I'll, you know, I'll put some more information. We'll cut that in. Um, but it's not overly buttery. Not Definitely oat. not. I mean, it's it's oat yeah. for sure, but I don't think it's like. It's oh not my God! It's yeah. Not it's not, yeah. I wish I had my cutting board. It's not the only. <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely not the only aspect. There's a little bit, yeah, the salty and maybe a little like sulfur. Am I wrong in that? On the very Something end, minerally. maybe. Yeah, definitely minerally. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. A little bit of a banana pineapple, too. Right. Deep, you're deep. Yeah. They say that. <laughs> not really. It is super pleasant up front. Definitely not your mother's Chardonnay. Not oaky. No. Not buttery. I mean, slightly. In a pleasant way, where it's not overwhelmingly either of those things. Yeah, like... <clears throat> nice acid. You would guess that this is a Chardonnay, but it wouldn't be like, oh, this is definitely a California Chardonnay. Right. <laughs> Overly oak, like a, like sure. a crema or something exactly. else, like that. It's not that. Um... But it's in the Chardonnay family. Mm -hmm. I would think that this is a fifty or sixty dollar bottle of Chardonnay because it has other layers of flavor yeah. above and beyond what you would think of immediately. I would agree totally. With Chardonnay. It's I've only taken one sip and my tongue is very awake in several different areas. The so. wine producer is Alejandro Vigil, uh, V I G I L. Um, apparently, from what I understand, he's like big into Chardonnay and Mendoza. It, apparently. Yeah, this is this He's is actually it. pretty pleasant. Again, yeah, not a white wine drinker, definitely not a Chardonnay aficionado. I kind of can't stand Chardonnay because I mean, it's so. I wasn't gonna say anything. Obvious. But I don't really like Chardonnay, but. By the way, the last time amazing. I was here, I told you I would drink it, but I wouldn't buy it. Right. Here we are, sir. Uh, <laughs> I told you there's gonna be a T-shirt, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh. You've seen this before, but Kara has not seen it. I am good for my word. He's coming through. T-shirt coming through. That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah, uh, but. Pretty pleasant. I mean, oh, it's very nice. I just opened this, by the way. Yeah. And there isn't like a lot of acidity. There's some. Right. And it's a good balancing act, but like I wouldn't say there's any one predominant flavor. No. I keep getting new things every time I try, which is exciting. Because now on my second or third sip, I'm getting a little bit of the more oak, but again, it's not the predominant flavor. It's very subtle. And it's not overly alcoholic either. 13.5. I mean, for Chardonnay, it's not out of line, but 13.5 for white wine can be aggressive if it's yeah. done wrong. Right. And in this case, this is not done wrong. I mean, it's present, but it's not burning my throat. Oh, definitely not. I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for it, which is why I'm noticing it. Yeah. But if you were just drinking this wine, like just to drink it, I don't think the word alcohol would come to mind right away. No. Yeah, I like this wine. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, I don't know if I'd go 96. I think that was uh, James Suckling or Earl Parker. I mean, they can be bought. Aggressive. I don't know. <laughs> If they were bought, that's the next thing. <laughs> I feel like they could be bought. <laughs> but, uh, by the way, I'm not against being bought. I'm just not poor enough to be bought. So I'm a little jealous. Right. But, we're not saying we wouldn't accept. Yeah, we take money. I like mean, if, if you're right. offering money to give good scores to wine, I'll take it. I mean, five dollars and above is not insulting. <laughs> exactly. Because that's what my opinion is. Every, <laughs> it was more than two cents. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, well, I guess we'll take that. I have to tell you. Um, I'd say this is 30, 40 seconds because I have my last sip. Still tasting the wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, definitely. It doesn't. It's not a full body Chardonnay. It's mm -hmm. not a. It's not a very viscous, but it's not like a little withering flower either. Oh, like it, it's, it it's, lingers. It, it lingers. It's there. It's not necessarily coating my tongue, but I. But it's there. Like mm -hmm. I notice the wine, and as I'm talking to you, I'm still noticing the wine. Yeah. So I think that's impressive. Um, 
Yeah, I'd say 92, 93 points for this. 93. And I'm grading on a curve because I hate white wine. <laughs> um, if you're a Chardonnay person and you're yeah. looking for something in the Chardonnay family, but with a little couple of different characteristics, this might be a good way to go. And at $25 a bottle, $24.99, I mean... Even like honey now I'm getting, I think. Yeah, I, I've, it's starting it's to linger. Oh, we got a little doggy in here. As you can tell, oh, by the way, we are in, outside the vineyard on the other side, so that's yep. farm equipment back there. Yep, uh, we are. we'll be using that soon. Yeah, what, what does that do anyway? That puts down the cover crop. Oh. So it literally drills the seed into the ground. Oh, wow, that's before cool. Before the rain comes. See, this is a real vineyard. I'm not just taking stills. <laughs> And walking around people with people I don't know. Right. You, know, you didn't just pull camera. over on the side of the road and uh, walk by the Napa sign. Yeah. This yeah. is real, guys. <laughs> Although I would do that. I'm changing. So hey, I'm you wouldn't here. be alone. Yeah. So I mean, do you feel like this is something you would buy at twenty five dollars? I, I would actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's really pleasant. It's not a traditional Chardonnay, and that's what I like in a Chardonnay is uh, you know the the more acidic, more not fruity necessarily but just light lighter you know um that's what i'm getting so that's kara george wine by the bay tv and we'll see you again next time